Hello and welcome back guys, Mangle Sun here. I want to make this perfectly clear that this is a Titan's Guide for Dummies. I'm going to be covering everything for the Titan. Arc, Void, Solar, you name it, except for Strand and Stasis. Right? So, timestamps will be in the description box below. Now let's get into it. The subclasses for the Titan are going to be as follows. As I'm going to describe them as the Igniter, the Disruptor, and the Generator. Now, each one of these sections, like I said, is broken up, but first, there's a bit of understanding when it comes to the Titan. The Titan Melee grants cure, overshields, amplifications used in all supers to punch and bash things. Resilience is your upper hand. While all the other classes will have to focus into resilience at some point, um, you, as a Titan, just naturally needed anyway for the cooldown of your barricade so the things that titans think is how do i punch it and how do i kill it but why do titans think this way well we get a 25 percent increase of radiant and pve 10 percent pvp overshields restoration cure and instant health regen now the soul invictus touch of thunder and offensive bulwark are going to be staples in your build taking these things off we're going to is going to change the build dramatically like you're not going to be able to play it the same way that you think you want to play it with taking these things off well let's get into the arc subclass and talk about why I designated it the Disruptor. Well, you do end up having your Touch of Thunder, which grants your grenades a various amount of abilities. And you also have your Knockout, which is going to give you the Amplification and give you the Health Regen. When it comes to using the Arc Titan, you want to attack relentlessly. You want to attack like everyone is watching, because they are and everyone's watching out for you. They're waiting for the thunder crash. They're waiting for you to pop your roaming super. They're looking to shut you down. You're countering, but they're waiting to counter your counter. So let's explain why jolted means nothing to you as a Titan. As a Titan, you have the various amounts of abilities. And these abilities range from zone control, blinding effects, and melee regen. So we're gonna look at a warlock arc tree the electrostatic mind defeating targets with arc abilities defeating jolted or blinded targets creating ionic trace creating collecting an ionic trace makes you amplify arc soul cast your roof ability create an arc soul fires the target in front of you allies pass through it riff you get an arc soul while amplify your arc souls are supercharged and gain increased fire rate right so the lightning search while sliding activate your charge melee blink forward do the melee and jolty enemies. Well, we know that collecting an ionic trace or defeating a jolty target will collect and will make an ionic trace, which will make you amplified. Being amplified grants you other abilities as a warlock. So for a Titan, jolt means nothing to you. So let's go over another set of abilities. This is a hunter arc subclass tree. Now Flow state, defeating a jolted target makes you amplified. While you amplify, your dodge recharges more quickly and you're more resilient while dodging and you grant increased reload speed, right? That's also a fragment, but the hunter gets it naturally. Tempest strike, while sliding, activate your charge melee, unleash a devastating uppercut, travels along the ground in front of you, damaging and jolting targets. Well, we also have lethal current. After dodging, your next melee has increased lunge range, jolts the target, increase the damaging after shots. Damaging any jolted target with a melee attack also blinds them. So, as we see with the following classes, Warlock, Hunter, defeating a jolted target grants you some sort of amplification, but as a Titan, jolt still means nothing to you. So what means anything to a Titan? Well, all right, well let's analyze what a Titan actually has in their kit knockout. Critically wounding a target or breaking their shields, infuses your melee attacks with arc energy, and increases your melee range for a short amount of time. Defeating targets with melee attacks starts health regeneration and makes you amplified, right? All right, so we wouldn't hear anything about Jolt. Jolt it was nowhere in that sentence or anything like that for help. All right, so we have Touch of Thunder. Your flashbang, pulse, lightning, and grenades have enhanced functionalities. Flashbangs do an extra blind. Pulse grenades create ionic traces. Lightning grenade jolts and storm grenades do a roaming thundercloud. All these things do a thing of what you're trying to get to. 
So if you want it, you can have it in the form of your grenade. Well, let's look at Juggernaut. With a fistful, uh, with a fistful, with full class ability, energy, and after sprint for a short amount of time, you gain a frontal shield that blocks incoming damage. Um, class ability breaks uh, energy depleted when amplified. Your shield um, resists more damage. So, as a striker titan, you're not looking to really do the jolted thing. So let's look over some of your exotics with the synergies that you have going on here. Insurmountable Skull Fort, when using your melee ability, you end up getting your melee back and health regen immediately. Point Contact Braces, grants you some melee energy back, jolts the target. Antaeus Wards, sliding, moving, right? You get a shield when you slide. And the Crest of the Fallen Star is going to be your bread and butter for the Thunder Crash, amplifying your damage up to 400%. These are all staples in the ARC subclass build, and none of them involves jolting, really, right? Antaeus Wars is in here because the Frontal Assault, the Juggernaut with the Frontal Shield, and Antaeus Wars is, is a good combination overall to mesh with the class. Now let's look at the solar subclass. The solar subclass have designated the igniter. And you may be wondering why isn't the world exploding when I'm using this subclass? The thing is, is that you are probably playing the solar titan in a way that is, well, not really how the solar titan is supposed to be played. So you end up throwing your hammer and you miss. You try to take out some red bar enemies. You end up getting attacked by an unstoppable overload champion, uh, anti-barrier. You throw a grenade. There's not enough scorch stacks to get the ignition. Um, using a thermite grenade, that's bread and butter. So that should be, what, 30 scorch stacks per every charge. So three, six, nine. Still missing 10 to get the ignition. So we put out some DPS with our solar weapon, right? That synergizes with our build. And that puts out shit damage. Now, having that shit damage and not being able to get the ignition is really, really frustrating. But not all enemies can be taken out by your throwing hammer. So what do you continue to do? Well, you use Laurelies, but Laurelies can't save weakness. So as a Solar Titan, why are you weak? Because you should be running into the field of battle, throwing your hammer, curing yourself, causing sunspots and desecration and ignitions amongst the masses. You should be able to survive the test of time and ignite everything in your wake. This is what it's supposed to feel like. It's almost like poetry in motion, watching a solar titan do its thing. When you pop your super, people and guardians and enemies are supposed to run and shiver and they're supposed to be like, oh my god, he just popped a super, how do I stop this guy? But they can't because you are a fury of flame and death and this is the way that it's supposed to feel. But it doesn't feel that way because you wonder why the fuck isn't anything igniting? So let's look at the solar exotics. So the solar exotics for the solar titan are as follows. Kepri's Horn, solar damage kills, recharge a barricade, which unleashes a burst of solar energy when summoned. There's nothing about scorches, ignition, igniting, uh, anything like that. Lordly Splendor Helm, when you're critically wounded with full class ability, energy when you catch a barricade, create a sunspot at your location that has improved restoration effects. Well, we know we make sunspots because of Soul Invictus, so thank you, Lordly Splendor. Ash and Wake, fusion grenades now explode on impact and gain increased throw speed. Final blows of fusion grenades grant grenade energy. It says nothing in there about ignition, so it doesn't go with our build. It does do a thing. Improves the recharge rate. Hall of Fire Heart improves the recharge rate of your solar abilities, greatly improves recharge rate while your super is charged, provides a small benefit to airborne effect in the stat of all weapons. We don't care. It doesn't grant ignition to our supers. The Path of Burning Steps, solar final blows periodically grant you escalating bonus weapon damage, and you can't really be frozen by stasis, kinda. Phoenix Cradle. Soul Invictus lasts twice as long. Allies who pass through your sunspot are also granted Soul Invictus and Solar Restoration. Who cares? It doesn't do anything with ignition, with scorch. Uh, it doesn't do anything with restoration. It doesn't grant us cure. It just does the thing that we're already doing. So let's go over why we have no teeth as a solar titan. You are not igniting. Ignitions are supposed to be our thing, right? So warlock scorches, hunter radiates, and titan's supposed to ignite. But 
if we examine the details of why nothing is fucking igniting, we will understand why the Solar Titan has such a hard time doing the thing that it's supposed to be able to be good at. So let's go over the Hunter Solar Tree. Acrobat's Dodge. This is a dodge. Perform the dodge to make yourself in there by allies radiant. Oh, that's cool. Radiant on command. Knife trick. Throw a fan of knives that scorch targets on hit. Melee scorch. Our hammer doesn't. Throw a knife with weighted throwing knife. Extra percentage of damage causes scorch targets to ignite. So a little bit of scorch, they instantly ignite. Lightweight knife. Precision hits with this knife make you radiant for a short period of time. Man, that's already two ways to become radiant and do um, ignitions, feed into the thing. So, Golden Gun, Deadshot, benefits from being radiant. That's all we need to know. It benefits from being radiant. And Golden Gun Marksman, benefits from being radiant. Generates orbs of power. All right, so here's the Warlock Solar Tree. Phoenix Dive, dive onto the ground, create a burst of solar light, cures nearby enemies. When heat rises activated, you grant restoration and scorch targets upon landing. So, scorch, restoration, and cure, great. All right, so we have incinerator snap. Sparks fly from your fingers, explode and scorch. Celestial fire, send out energy blasts, scorching targets. Icarus dash, while airborne, rapidly defeating targets, which your super will grant you cure. Touch of flame, your healing solar firebolt and fusion grenades have enhanced functionality. We've seen this before, but we wish it was on our Titan. Healing grenades improve restoration. Solar grenades linger longer, and fireball grenades do extra. The fusion grenades explode twice. There we go. Heat rises. When heat rises, final blows while airborne grant you melee energy. Hmm. So we know the solar grenade can last a really long time. We know that the daybreak super can slightly track. We know that our Well of Radiance, while slamming the sword into the ground, grants Scorching, Restoration, Radiant, and Prevent Stasis, while the Titan has Solar and Victus. All right, so let's go over it. Solar and Victus. Solar ability final blows, Hammer of Soul impacts, and defeating Scorch targets create sunspots. Your abilities regenerate faster, you super range more slowly while standing in a sunspot. Sunspot applies Scorch and deal damage to people who stand in sunspot. Roaring Flames, final blows with solar abilities or ignitions causes the damage of your solar ability to stack three times. Hoorah. Our only igniting aspect is Consecration. While sliding, activate the charge melee, launch into the air, solar wave, scorch, land on the ground, ignite. Um, the wave hits any scorch target they ignite, right? So consecration, we got to get up close and personal. So let's go over some of the fragments that the solar class has. Solar grenade final abilities cure you. Solar grenade final blows cure you. Okay, cool. We already get that with Solar Invictus, but I guess we can have it again. It's a staple in some classes. Ember of Singeing, your class ability regens faster when you're Scorch targets. This pairs well with Loralees because all we can do is kind of tickle people with Scorches, so why not? Ember of Benevolence, applying Restoration Cure Radiant to allies grants increased grenade melee and class ability regeneration for short duration. We can really only do a few of those things without sacrificing our only Scorch ability, which is our grenade. Ember of Beams, your solar super projectiles have stronger target acquisition. Our hammers should already have stronger projectile target acquisition. Ember of Empyrean. Solar weapon or ability final blows extend the duration of restoration of radiant effects applied to you. Well, we're already restoring ourselves, so why not? Why not do that? Grant ourselves some radiancy and restoration. Final blows with a solar super causes targets to ignite and create a fire sprite. This is Ember of Combustion. Okay, well, where, where do I get fire spikes from? Because my soul invictus doesn't make fire spikes naturally. It just does sunspots. So I guess I got to find fire spikes somewhere else. Ember of Torches. Powered melee attacks against combatants make you and their bio allies radiant. The hunter doesn't really need that. Um, Ember of Char. Your soul ignition spurs scorch to affect the targets. That's great if we can ignite somebody. 
Ember of Tempering, Solar Weapon Final Blows, grant you and your allies increased recovery for a short duration, stacks three times, grants your airborne effectiveness, and Weapon Final Blows create a Fire Sprite. Okay, maybe we should put this on and get some more recovery. Yeah. So, Ember of Blistering, defeating targets with solar ignitions, grants grenade energy. Ignitions, well... I'm Still, I really wish I could get ignite something. So how do I ignite something? Ember of Solace. Radiant and Restoration effects apply to you have increased duration. Okay. Ember of Eruption. Solar ignitions have an increased area of effect. Ember of Ashes. You apply more Scorch stacks to the target. Ember of Wonder. Rapidly defeating multiple targets with solar ignitions creates an orb of power. Man, these ignitions does sound good. If we can get it going with Consecration... Ember of Searing, defeating scorched targets, grants melee energy and creates a fire sprite. Okay, so now we have two ways to create a fire sprite. But this is why this exotic feels so good. Lordly Splendor Helm. When you're critically wounded with full class ability, you heal yourself. You are a selfish healer. The Sunspots is what grant you a lot of benefits as a Soul Titan. It works because you have no passive that grant ignitions or scorch unlike a hunter and a warlock you are at the mercy of ignitions so let's talk about the void class why is this the generator well just a few things will pop on screen of why this is the generator i'm not gonna have time to go over them all but you can pause the video and read them so why does this subclass feel like the best subclass when you play it well, overall, in short, the synergies are there when it comes to the Void class. The Void class is held back uh, a little bit by the offensive bulwark and the Bastion aspect. The Bastion only have only having two, only having one slot available, uh, really limiting your loadout. But controlled demolition is for the true Titans out there taking off Bastion. Hitting a target with avoidability or volatile explosion makes them volatile further. Damage make sure the volatile target explode. Offensive bulwark. While you have an overshield or you're inside of Ward of Dawn, your grenade charge is significantly faster. You have increased melee range and damage, and your melee uh, blows extended duration of your overshield. You gain an additional shield throw when you are in Sentinel Shield. Bastion, the one fragment slot. Caster. <clears throat> Cast your super and grant overshield to nearby allies. Casting your barricade grants you an overshield to yourself, nearby allies, empowering them and enabling it to slowly regenerate the overshield of allies bunkering behind it and extends the duration. So, the Bastion is great. I can understand why it's only one, because it's really, really overpowered. And it's it's overall its overall flow is good. You can combine it with the Repulsor Blaze, the Repulsor Blaze, the Repulsor Brace, or you can do the destabilizing rounds. You can use your melee, get your overshield. You can use your super, get two shield throws. And you can also use any of these plethora of great exotics, the Doomfang Pauldrons. Melee kills grant you super energy and health regen. And when you get a kill in your super, you regen more super energy back. No backup plans when you have full class ability energy. You eliminate an enemy with a shotgun. You grant you avoid overshield. Melee kills, uh, shotgun kills with a Shotgun kills grant melee energy. Also Furiosa, while blocking, you gain super energy and second chance grants you two shield throws. These are all great. Second chance got a little bit of a buff. It came out just, just a tad bit underpowered, but we um, we like it nonetheless. It's okay, right? Granting two melees. The synergies of the class and the exotic are good. So as a Void Titan, you're, you're probably gonna lean towards this one the most because it, it feels the best. It's got the best synergies. When it comes to using all the other classes, you have to understand that if you want to be specific in an igniter for the Solar Titan, it's going to take a lot of work. If you want to be a monster of an attacker for an Arc Titan, you're going to have to be really aggressive, but understand when to be passive. And as a Void Titan, you, you, just, you just play the game. <laughs> you just play the game. But let's go over some stats, right? So... We know the general stats, right? We have mobility, we have resilience, we have recovery, discipline, intellect, and strength. 
the resilience tent, like I said, is your upper hand because it goes hand in hand with your barricade and you're going to need high resilience anyway in the game. So just naturally going into that, you already have the one up because you have the class ability to regen and the 100 resilience. So what else do you need to focus in? Trying to keep a 50 and a 40 on your mobility is great. Uh, getting to a 50 on your discipline and uh, 50 on intellect, 50 on strength is all great. You're going to want to understand that uh, the Rally Barricade has a shorter cooldown than the Towering Barricade. So the Rally Barricade is going to be used in most instances unless you're, you know, you got that 100 resilience. You like rocking the Towering Barricade. Straight Flip is the best mobility, uh, the mo mobility ability because this is your movement and it burst glides and is the key to titan skating, right? You wanna do the hop and the de-acceleration and the acceleration to do your little titan skate to run faster, to move faster on the map, right? You can you can use the other jumps, but straight flip is the way to go if you wanna master titan skating. Now, the grenades, right? The grenades are the big deal. The melee is your choice. The grenades are key. Vortex grenade, suppression grenade. All the grenades are good, uh, but the vortex grenade, suppression grenade, void wall grenade, and the magnetic grenade are going to be some of your best friends. They have some of the most lethality and they have the best synergies. As for the arc, you're going to want to go post grenade, you're going to want to go with the storm grenade, you're going to want to go with the lightning grenade, you're going to want to go with the grenades that really synergize with the class and the, uh, the aspect that you have on that grant you those other things. There's no skip grenade support, there's no flux grenade support, um, there's no arc way up support. You're going to want to use your thruster ability, but if you want to use the barricades, you can, but most arc titans use the thruster ability because they spam hard of innermost light, and you're, you're really aggressive with the arc titan, so you don't really need the barricade like that. If you're using the Sunbreaker, I like using these Swarm Grenades because they have probably those little ticks of Scorch, right? Little tin Scorch stacks here. I like using the Healing Grenade because I'm a healer at heart. And the Solar Titan doesn't really have anything that Scorches. They heal, they ignite, and Incandescent is your best friend. The Fusion Grenade is good. It's good. <laughs> it's good. Um, it's good if you use Ash and Wake. But the Incinerator Grenade is going to cause the most Scorch stacks. Uh, so, yes, grenades do scorch, but it's the only ability that you have that it's going to scorch. Um, the hammer strike scorches when you hit, but if you don't get the kill with the hammer strike, you're, you're probably in a bad spot anyway. So, I do like using Consecration over Roaring Flames, right? I, th I think they both have their place in the, in the meta, but as far as me wanting to ignite things in PvE, Consecration is the way to go. It feels the best. Um... And so you get the throwing hammer with the cure, you get the consecration with the ignite, you get the best of both worlds. So high resilience base armor is what you need. You want to mod into discipline. Uh, you don't really want to mod into strength because there's a, a lot of perks that are underlining in the overall build that will get you your melee energy back. So I hope this video did help you guys out in understanding the Titan and more of its abilities. If you guys did enjoy the video, hit that like button and I will see you in the next one.